welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We are on Highway 395 in Eastern California. I want to check out this dog town. Back in the 1850s, it was a gold mining town and it didn't last very long, but there's a roadside marker. And across the river, you can see the remnants of dog town. Eighteen fifty-seven, site of the first major gold rush to California's eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada. Dogtown derived its name from a popular miner's term for camps with huts or hovels. Ruins lying close to the cliff bordering Dogtown Creek are all that remain of the makeshift dwellings which were here formed part of the diggings. This is really just a generic marker that talks about uh, the visions that people had of streets paved with gold that lured people to the Sierra Nevadas during the mid to the late 1800s. Bitter winter winds dropped temperatures well below zero and snowfall was often several feet deep. Homes with little or no insulation neither kept out wind or cold. Shortages of provisions, difficult travel conditions, illness and isolation were some of the many challenges faced by these hardy prospectors. Down there is a creek. Looks like there's a lot of pilings over there from the mining operations. That does not look natural at all. Over here is another plaque that talks about the boom and bust cycle of these towns. It's said that the largest nugget ever found on the eastern slope came from here, so there could still be gold down there. We're going to try to make our way across the creek there and see if we can check out the remains of Dogtown. And by the looks of it, there's a grave over there as well. Are you up for another travel down to Dogtown? Where are we? Dogtown. <laughs> Dogtown. It's an old mining camp. What? What is it? 1850. Oh, I didn't. Seven, 1859. Nine. Spotted a grave from way afar. You cannot see. It doesn't have a engraving on it. It could be that of two men, Swedish native Peter Johan Andersson, who died in July 1906 at the age of 79 here at Dogtown, and a man named Jack Westwood. A newspaper article stated that Mr. Andersson was buried close to where he lived. It was reported that an Indian passed through Dogtown and found the decomposed body of Andersson lying on his porch. After the Indian reported the death to Coroner Welch in Bridgeport, the plan was to bring the body to Bridgeport, but his condition was so bad that they called for eight men to dig a grave at Dogtown. A Bridgeport Chronicle Union newspaper account indicated that actually two iron fences were placed around the graves of Peter Anderson and Jack Westwood in the local cemetery. claim this was a building, but they claim it was a building, but I don't know. like old volcanic rock. I thought that, that sign just says to enjoy but don't. So this is the primitive buildings, only two buildings that are left of Dogtown. Founded right around the time that Bodie Gold was discovered. We're about five miles south of the Bodie turnoff. There's a third one there but it's more crumbled. It does have some timber in it. This community boomed for a little while and then it crashed, just like all other boom towns. Most of this building must have fallen because it looks like it's only about anywhere from three to five feet high. The trick is stepping down without scraping myself on sagebrush or rock. Here's what would have been the entrance to this little building. 
Dogtown, also known as Dogtown Diggings, was established approximately 1857 by Carl Norst as a placer mining camp. By 1859, a group of Mormons arrived here to mine. Dogtown became the site of the first gold rush to the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada. A small camp and trading center sprung up overnight. Dogtown attracted attention to the region, but fell by the wayside when much richer deposits were discovered at nearby Monoville, Bodie, Aurora, and Masonic. The name Dogtown was often applied to camps with miserable living conditions. Another story tells that the town got its name from the large number of dogs over here. One popular story passed down recounted a woman who settled here with her three dogs, which began breeding. She began selling them to lonely miners for pinches of gold. The dog population exploded, thus the name of Dogtown. It's really hard to believe that there's places like this that exist still. The remnants of buildings that were here in 1850s. There's another building there, but it's in worse shape. This community goes so far back that there's probably no pictures even of it. Not much photography back in the 1850s. This is the fourth one. There are four here, huh? Yeah, there's a fallen one that's between those and this. Because online they basically state that there were two here. I think there's only two visible from the highway, though. There's four. So there's this one, that one, and the two over there. Unless there's more that way. All you had to do to make a building is crawl up there and gather some of the small stones and throw them down the hill. These aren't small. They could roll though. But they had a source of water. You yeah, they did have water here. I'm inside one of the buildings of Dogtown. Sagebrush strikes terror in the heart of Sarah because her car was so full of it on our trip to Aurora. If you haven't seen our trip to Aurora, you need to go back and find that video. We almost didn't get in. This is what we've been dealing with for like how many miles? Way too many. This is interesting, an old cable right here. Highway 395 is over there. I think that's as far as I want to go. Yeah, I don't think there's much left down this way. It must not have been a very big town, that's for sure. But you can see all of the rock pilings. That's not natural, right? Yeah. There's some metal. There's more evidence of civilization here. There's a third building right here. So with the travel and traffic of 395 behind me, I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. If you checked out Dogtown, you probably never even knew it existed until us presenting it on YouTube. So thanks. We'd always appreciate a comment and a like. Also, if you could subscribe to this channel, we would love and appreciate that. Thank you.